Hello everyone, I'm Paul Briggs, and this is a brief video uh, talking about some of the work that I have uh, on display uh, presently at uh, Lucy Lacoste Gallery in Concord, Massachusetts. So many are familiar with the poem Cage Bird uh, by Maya Angelou. And well, let me just say a little bit about why I turned to uh, poetry, Black poetry specifically uh, during this time. I, I've been working on pieces that have a lot of pain in them. My pain, is pain that I have seen and pain that people are sharing with me, general pain, but specifically black pain. And that work was feeling a little heavy. So I decided to turn to poetry. I mean, I could have turned to the blues, I could have turned to gospel. But poetry seemed at this time, something that I could uh, begin to materialize those other genres of, of, of expressing and gaining victory over Black pain. I, I think I'm so used to materializing uh, responses to the gospel in a particular way that poetry seemed to, to be internalized, but not something that I had tried to make concrete. And so I turned to poetry, as I already stated, because it deals with Black pain and Black suffering, uh, but like the blues and like the gospel, it doesn't celebrate the pain, but uses creativity and art to gain a foothold in the pain and even to become victorious and thrive in spite of pain. So the cage bird, uh, this piece, again, I wanted to add a lot of hope to, to this cage. It actually also references Bob Marley's uh, Three Little Birds. So I didn't put just one bird internally. I put uh, three and I left a way out. So out of the front or out of the back. Uh, so th these bars that would normally be vertical, I, in my mind, I pushed them down. Uh, to allow this escape to take place. Uh, the, uh, also the poems aren't, the pieces aren't necessarily named after the poem. So this, the poem written by Langston Hughes is the Negro speaks of rivers. And I've just taken the first line uh, to name the piece, I've known rivers. Uh, this is a, another, well, they're all powerful poems. Uh, this poem, I read somewhere that someone, another black poet responded to this poem saying, when he read Langston Hughes's poem, he, uh, he or she thought to themselves, I didn't know that black people were writing about such things. Uh, you know, this, 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 this poem, I've known rivers. I've known rivers. I've known rivers ancient as the world and older than the flow of human blood in human veins. My soul has grown deep like the rivers. I bathed in the Euphrates when dawns were young. I built my hut near the Congo and it lulled me to sleep. I looked upon the Nile and raised the pyramids above it. I heard the singing of the Mississippi when Abe Lincoln went down to New Orleans and I've seen its muddy bosom turn all golden in the sunset. 
I've known rivers, ancient, dusky rivers. My soul has grown deep like the rivers. So here's a poem seemingly without any knots in it. Knots being metaphors for me of pain. And it does rive majestically above the suffering. But the poem definitely points to the, the presence, the, the, the presence of Blacks throughout history using rivers and their, their, their giving of life as a, as a metaphor and analogy for, for that presence and the ongoingness of, of such a presence. I, I, I built the pyramids above the Nile. And this is a, a clear reference to uh, what people of color, I'm trying not to, to label, they were, we call them Egyptians, Africans on the continent uh, were able to do. And so I, I see this, this poem as harnessing power. I think about the rivers. I think about some of the paintings, uh, of, of those early American paintings of waterfalls and the courier knives and some of the propaganda that was in those paintings of, uh, of power not being used. And, and so these, I, I didn't put any knots in the piece. I didn't put any pain in the piece. I put the knots outside the piece and I, I have them flowing down into, and of course I'm always thinking of inside and outside, uh, literally in the pieces, but also, you know, as a, as a, as a, as a metaphor for inner condition, outside forces. And so these outside forces getting translated into something beautiful uh, is, is, is what I was up to here. This is another, another piece. It, it, the, the, the poem is called Poem Number 10 uh, by uh, Sonia Sanchez. And I, I've named it, uh, this piece, I'm Here. Uh, from the last, uh, from the last uh, line in the in the poem, uh, I'm seeing here this relationship, um, which has many facets to it, and this this kind of this appeal to this give and take over time. And then finally, this, this appeal, you keep saying you were always there. You keep saying you were always there. Will you stay, love, now that I am here? And so I, I, I'm kind of seeing this, this one availability, this one, and there are, again, no knots in this piece. So the poetry, again, was kind of, kind of removing the pain. I have one knot at the top uh, of, of, of this kind of longing that I'm sensing in this poem. Uh, but all of these links of these, of these facets of personalities on both sides, are all held together by uh, this this one thing. I often say that you know you have relationships and uh, you have two solitudes, as I understand uh, uh, Rilke, and but they come together to create this. And so that's what I I, I was up to uh, in this piece. So. Let's see here, I'll, I'll try and hurry myself along. Power, or, or Audre Lorde's power, uh, is a, uh, <laughs> it's a painful, painful poem, uh, but definitely speaking about the, uh, the influence of power 
um, outside forces on inner conditions. And so again, I don't really have knots on the inside of this piece either. I have all the knots again coming from the outside, but uh, as opposed to uh, the movement that happens on the inside of I've known rivers here becomes this bewildering tangle and jumble of content and emotions and feeling tones and and you if you read the poem you you'll you'll see why um why I, why I've gone in this direction um anyway uh, I do see hope in in the piece and Orgy Lord does uh, uncover uh against all odds uh in 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 inner strength as uh as uh as they do in a lot of their works okay lucille clifton okay uh lucille clifton this poem is surely uh i thought i had it pulled up here somewhere uh, lucille clifton This poem, pardon me, yes. Okay. <laughs> pardon me. <laughs> I'd rather have a, a woman uh, read this, a black woman read this. Uh, but uh, won't you celebrate with me is the is the name of the poem. And I just went with celebrate with me. Won't you celebrate with me? What I have shaped into a kind of life. I had no model. Born in Babylon, both non white and woman. What did I see to be except myself? I made it up here on this bridge between starshine and clay. My one hand holding tight my other hand. Come celebrate with me that every day something has tried to kill me and has failed. <laughs> so I put knots all over this piece. Uh, knots on the inside, knots on the outside, and yet celebration that all of this, all of these forces on the outside that has injured injured me, injured her on the inside, nevertheless has failed uh, in its efforts to kill me. Uh, I better run through these. Uh, Mama Sayings is wonderful. It reminds me of that Stevie Wonder song, um, you know, walking, thinking back when we were young and Lauren Hill has a similar song uh, 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 of, of of rehearsing on Saturday morning cartoons and all that. And it just reminds me of all those sayings. And you know, some of the sayings, uh, you know, when, you know, often, I don't know, definitely true in my home. Uh, family can definitely keep you humble. <laughs> and a lot of the things that we say to each other are, they're not meant to be harmful, really. Uh, and this poem, if you if you really read through it, there is a lot of endearing sayings. You know, they are uh, they are pithy sayings. They are almost poetic sayings, and they are to correct behavior and to change disposition. And uh, Mama is doing this in the. Uh, you know, in the 
in a humorous way, in a humorous way, but definitely uh, uh, in a way that's memorable. These sayings that I remember when I think about my own children and the things that they remember that I said. <laughs> I don't quite remember them that way, but, uh, uh, but they do. So we hear our parents' voices in our heads. And so here, uh, Henriette Mullen is hearing uh, mama sayings in her head. And so again, I don't put knots on the inside. I do put connection on the inside. Uh, I, I, I have put the forces on the outside pulling on the inside, but they can't pull the inside apart because of the strength that has been uh, embedded there um, um, by mama sayings. You know, I, you see that strong um, um, black female presence of holding it all together. Uh, okay, let me go through. Okay, so these pieces, uh, the three, there's more than three here, uh, there at the show. Uh, but these, these, these pieces are less kind of interpretation. Uh, they could all almost be untitled, uh, but more and more as I become more saturated with uh, uh, content around uh, incarceration, I, it, it just keeps coming out. Uh, I keep seeing it. And so this piece, uh, very simple piece, well, simple, not so simple to make uh, or to glaze. <laughs> Uh, but the idea was that people were, you know, people were saying about Michael Brown and uh, George Floyd that, you know, they kept saying, you know, uh, uh, so, somebody, somebody was interpreting it saying, you know, everybody focused on him saying, uh, you know, Michael Brown saying, you know, I can't breathe, you know, I can't breathe. Uh, but before that, he was saying, why are you always stopping me? And so for this piece, this profiling, this ongoing, I was just thinking of, it happens all the time. Somebody, I mean, goes out of their way to cross the street, you know, because you're on the sidewalk or won't get in the elevator because you're there. And to the, to the point of being stopped and profiled all the time by the police. So this is just repetition. And I put all the rings on the back side of this, you know, the ideal of, you know, having your hands behind your back and being cuffed, profiled all the time. And this just really kind of lends itself to the, the systemicness of, of just racial violence uh, in, in all of its manifestations. Uh, and the, again, this metaphor of the refuted vessel, you know, of, 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 of this arrested development. I have a, one of the pieces is called arrested development. And on these pieces, uh, the refuted vessel uh, was really a very aesthetic uh, idea of the use of something being impeded. Uh, it was by its beauty or by its preciousness. Uh, or the aesthetic getting in the way of the function. Uh, that's where I was going. And now they've taken on, the, again, this, this new meaning of, of being impeded on the inside, uh, having, ha having one's usefulness or effectiveness uh, refuted, impeded uh, by forces uh, on the outside. So when you look down into these, the there's a distortion of the inside and obviously it's pierced. So it's, you know, it's not gonna do all those things that uh, we might want out of a vessel. Uh, I, that went far longer than I uh, anticipated. Um, anyway, I guess you can jump around in the video and uh, eat the fruit and throw the peeling away. So I, I hope this is helpful in understanding the, the exhibit poetic, uh, poetic justice. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, let's see here. 